Okay. Uh, what do we want to call this one? Fuck Gorman, Gorman, Gorman dog, dog fight? Dog fight? Yar, welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 283. The Gorman dog fight. I be Braden. Oh no, I'm Zo. I'm Dan. <laughs> and I'm Andrew. He's still like going for from last after hours. This is all he wanted to do was talk like a pirate for the rest of the show. And now you fucking now. contribute enough to Patreon for us to talk with pirates? Yeah, no. <laughs> well, Did they didn't check? contribute enough for us to stop, though. Either. Oh, okay, that's fair. We're stuck, oh, we're oh, stuck oh, in the gray area yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're supposed to. Age. Oh, God. <laughs> um. Uh, at first glance at this one, at this case, I was like, you know, I thought it was going to be just a run in the mill, you know, fucking UFO. But God, I said, you see some up there. But now, like, now that I got into it, I'm like, man, this I think is one of the first ever like where a guy just like. A cover up where they're just like, like yeah, you, we're just you mean oh yeah i think i see something up oh, there eh? oh, there's something yeah. up there oh, boy geez. yeah i saw something you don't say hey bud um obviously this one we're heading to our third favorite place in the craig Strima, which is fargo north dakota wait where are the other two uh west virginia obviously okay and uh tbd <laughs> <laughs> got okay. two we'll find the third insert your you need three points to make a triangle yeah. <laughs> so now it's just hometown. it's just craig's line now <laughs> yeah. is there any way that you can plug in an automated voice for wherever the listener is listening to <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure there is some type of ai we can get used for that favorite place <laughs> is it's like pascagoula missouri <laughs> like, oh cool that's where i'm from that's where i'm from no we just gotta way. make it we gotta make like a video like uh when like tom green and uh shatner <laughs> made where you, you just auto put put in their name yeah. smart <laughs> Uh, all right, let's uh, let's let's get into this one. I'm excited to kind of talk about it because it does have <laughs> ties into Zell's little uh, light propulsion theory too. We can get into it a little later. And I mean, North Dakota is pretty much Canada, so it's pretty much home for us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If he, if Canada came down and took North Dakota, nobody would. We could take North Dakota, and Minnesota. That's the thing, and nobody, nobody would knows. stop you. Yeah, there's lots of cow. Uh, maybe the cows. Would, maybe you'd have trouble with the cows. I don't know, but like, I think, I think cows outnumber people. We North got a Dakota. few cow wranglers around here. We're good. Yeah, oh yeah, should be fine. Oh yeah, we'll go over better than the emu wars. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, this specific case file is. Um, it actually, it actually wasn't very popular um, case for a long time, and and actually it came to the public eye like recently when they uh, History Channel did their Project Blue Book kind of docu drama thing about yeah. you know Jalen Hynek and the right you know his whole experience running that thing, and it was a dramatized version of Project. Took a few Blue liberties, spices yeah. up a bit, yeah. 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 a little Hollywood magic, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so uh, it, this one occurred in, you know, the golden age of UFOs. So it was, you know, October 1st, 1948, uh, near everybody's favorite place, Fargo, North Dakota. Um, and this incident involved a pilot named uh, Lieutenant George F. Gorman. Former heavyweight uh, champ. Former heavyweight champ, inventor oh, yeah, of, the, uh, uh, of the less popular Gorman Grill. The Gorman yeah. Grill. <laughs> what if he off. named all his kids George as well? Yeah, like I'm sure. Like George, you know? that's yeah. I like. If your name is George, I think that's what you you have to do. Uh, yeah, right? that makes yeah? sense. I'm pretty sure that's written yeah. down somewhere. And when they get at the yeah, hospital, that's... like, oh, you have another kid named George. Oh, you're that kid's George. They just put it on. They just put it on the birth certificate. Just they like... just come and ask. So, what do you want his middle name to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and at the time, he was a lieutenant in the uh, the recently formed North Dakota Air National Guard. Uh, and so, he, at this particular point in time, he was on uh, exercises, exercises, flying a P fifty one Mustang, everybody's favorite World War Two fighter. Um, and this guy, and this guy was like a World War Two veteran, like yeah, yeah, like tons of flights. Like I think he he'd, he'd flown like transport planes and stuff before, but he uh, he was an aviator prior to this. Like he had yeah, he had like flying planes, well experienced, and mm -hmm. you know, qu quite young as everyone was, twenty five years old. We yeah. don't trust twenty five year olds to do jack and shit nowadays. <laughs> you got to have nine certifications to do anything, and they're like, yeah, nine pretty much here. <laughs> and you got to be seventy two years old. I'm oh, pretty sure, guys, like <laughs> World War vet at twenty five, probably got six kids. Fucking yeah, yeah. yeah. Nineteen forty eight, like they're just, just a man at thirteen. Guard. Yeah, if they're yeah. forming the Air National Guard. 
they're just like we have all these planes that we made let's just put them in all the states he's, and just like whatever he's only got another what like 10 years left too yeah, right? like, yeah. Like, life expectancy wasn't very long back there was it <laughs> um you know they, well you know they gave all the planes to north dakota because they're like you know we 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 beat down the Nazis, but those those shifty Canadians, you know, and we got to be ready. So yeah, we're gonna ship up all we're gonna ship up all our uh, our P fifty ones up there and, and get you guys ready. <laughs> for when they well, get- it's a funny. There's a there's a funny bit in this story that we can, we'll get into where he like specifically mentioned he's like it's not one of them Canadian vampires. And I was like, <laughs> what? like a specific Canadian plane. I was like, well, that was specific. <laughs> like, was that something they were worried about in North Dakota? That we had some vampire planes? Those are the night fighter around? ones, right? Didn't they have those? They're specific, like night flying planes of vampires. Yeah, and they're like, it's like a, it's got two tails or something. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I never it's cool. Look, it's a cool plane. Out. Yeah, it's a super yeah, cool plane. Cool looking plane. And he like specifically was like, it's not one of those. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, they had, they've had problems. It was with those Canadian them. vampires? That guy named Zell. It wasn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Got our own vampire squad. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, so on that specific night of October 1st, uh, around 8.30 p.m., uh, Gorman and his squadron that was accompanying him had just returned from a cross-country uh, flight. So they had gone forth, um, you know, back and forth. And they were just – he kind of decided, like, the rest of his squadron was going to go ahead and land at the nearest airport Um and then Gorman decided kind of off the cuff to be like, you know what, uh, it's, it's getting into the evening, it's getting late, so – but I, I – it probably behoove me to rack up some night flying time uh, just to, to put on the logs and put on that down on paper. So – Oh, is that why he's doing it? Because he's like, oh, I need to get some like – train like log yeah. time in for my qualification. Yeah, yeah. In my head, I was like – I was like, this motherfucker's just joyriding a plane? Like they just – well, he might have been doing that. He could have been yeah. doing that too, and just yeah, be like, you know, uh, yeah. But it, it was a nice, clear night, right? It's perfect night mm-hmm. to get some yeah. fucking night out. So he's like, yeah, I'm like get Coach some night Bombay flying. showing up at the ice rink, and the 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 fucking Zamboni driver just is like, oh yeah, you got 30 minutes, Bombay. <laughs> um uh so yeah he he was gonna log some some night flying hours, and then uh he was like taking a couple laps around the local football stadium. But as he <laughs> While they're playing, you gotta get your run in. Yeah, I mean, you know, just make a couple circles. Everybody go, ooh, tower, ah, you know. Cool. You know, he was thinking. He's like, if I was doing a bombing run, this is That's, I'm in his mind. That's what he's practicing. Yeah, hundred percent. I hate that fucking football team. <laughs> As he's going up, that's what you get for benching me, bud. <laughs> Um, and so as he as he finished up his his circle around the uh, around the local football, he he. Um, he turned towards the airfield and he was going to go ahead and go in for a landing and the tower, you know, as he called into the tower, the tower told him like, Hey, um, we see something like there's, there seems to be like a taillight of uh, another aircraft, uh, up in the air with you. Um, and so Gorman kind of looked around and the only aircraft that he actually noted, uh, visually or put his eyes on, he said there was a Piper cub, a Piper cub plane about 500 feet below him um, that he could see fucking plane on the planet. Piper cub. Just a little Piper cub. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just like, honestly, when you think of like little prop plane, exactly the one oh, you're yeah. thinking of. Yeah. It's a, it was, it was a personal plane. So it was like a little tiny, tiny thing. We said this before about like people just like in the 1940s mm-hmm. and fifties, it seems like everybody just had a plane. Like, I feel like everybody, like, in the middle of the United States just had a plane and we're just, like, flying around. Like, we talked about we talked about the one guy that had his own airfield. And he's like, whoa, why'd you put an airfield out here? Oh, everybody needs to, you know, land their planes out here. And I'm like, who the fuck needs to land their planes? How many planes are there? People are just flying around. Like, <laughs> um, how much are these? Like, I, I haven't even looked this up. Like, how much does a plane like this cost? Like, now do you rent it? Or 1940? Well, it's, yeah, like, in, well, the like proportionally. Like, proportionally, like, how much does this cost to, like. All you right, know. I'll look on eBay. Yeah, if I can find out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. There's um, plenty to play. Probably proportionally the same price now as like a small car. A hundred and fifteen thousand to two hundred and forty five thousand dollars right now. Holy shit! Right now. Right, right now. now. But like, how would you own one back then? I don't know. How would you? I guess you could buy like, one for. There's some. Well, I got there's news some for you, for, bud. The bidding's at fucking like five grand right now on eBay. Let's go. Oh, shit. Oh, well, we got a pi- yeah, let's get let's a Piper get Club, ATT I guess. Let's get an Piper Cub. <laughs> yeah, let's go. That's how we get, a, get around on pod trips. We can log some flight time or log some night flying time. You know? That's how we yeah. die? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so um Gorman's looking around to find this other aircraft that the that the tower is telling him that they see. They see this this light from another craft, and he's like, I don't I don't see anything else right now. Um Well, uh, he specifically mentions the Piper Cub to them, and they're like, Yeah, we see that. This isn't that. Yeah. And then so then he kind of he looks around from the can from, you know, inside the cockpit and he sees like another light. And he's like, oh, OK, I think I think I see what you guys are talking about. Uh, let me go take a look at like what this is, because you guys don't have it on radar or anything. Um, and as Gorman gets closer to this light, he realized that it's not it's not an aircraft that he is familiar with. It's it's not an aircraft that he's ever seen or or he's not sure what it is. Um, well, he can't even really distinctly see anything but like some sort of emanating light from this thing. So he's, he's just like, I have no fucking idea as he's flying up to it. Absolutely <laughs> gobsmacked. Yeah. It's just, it's just pretty much this. Yeah, That's it's great. just this great description. Okay. it's just this bright light that he's looking at and all all the while he's in communication with the tower kind of asking him like hey is there another plane up here uh with me and you know is there, is there something that i'm not seeing and the, you know the tower is telling him like no there's there's only two planes in the air over fargo right now you and you buddy and the other guy like the Piper and this Cub. is That's when it. the flashbacks start happening <laughs> uh, uh so when Gorman says that and when he reported that he got he closed to within about a thousand yards of this light and he said that this this object seemed to be about only about six to eight inches in diameter and was just emitting this this brilliant bright white six to light. eight inches. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> I, I know. Even, does, whoa, how do you even hey, decipher that in the sky? Hey, listen, six, yeah. six to eight inches is pretty fucking big, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right? so that's way so above so average. So okay, yeah. that's okay. way above yeah. the, the average. Well, I'll tell you right now, you'd know if you're looking at six to eight. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, was, so is that a real number though? Six to eight. That's what that, that. That's what he just. That wasn't six to eight yeah, feet. Yeah, well, what, like think that's about it, like, how many people could really make an accurate fucking distinction up there of the size. That's like a like a big beetle. Six inches. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you're a thousand yards away. That thing's meter, six right? to eight inches. Uh, it's six yeah. to eight inches big. Excuse me? I think from a thousand yards away, the guy's got no fucking clue how big that is. That's what I mean. Yeah, there's no, yeah, <laughs> what a that's weird a thing to say. No, yeah. That is such an absurd number to say. You're well, like, I'm holding up I'm my a, iPhone, and it's about an iPhone and a half, eh? <laughs> like, what do you Look think, bud? Head. Yeah, he's he's looking down really Hold quick. Hold on, boys, well, let me get my up, pecker out. Here, man. look up. Yeah. Six to eight. <laughs> Boy, six to eight, bud. Come on now. Uh, I mean, that's the that's the point that we that they made. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, <laughs> this guy's sitting in the cockpit, and he's like, "Well, you got a size on it? Yeah, she's about uh, yeah, she's about six to eight inches there." <laughs> fucking, like, fucking. Uh, it like this yeah. through the fucking. <laughs> About this big, so six to eight. Yeah, I'm looking at they get about here, hey, from a hundred feet away. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking great. Uh, he so, never gets uh, close uh, enough to this thing. To that's such an d- inaccurate description. That's what I mean. Like, distance, <laughs> like it must have been. It must be like through at a hundred yards on my thing. I can. I'm looking at six to eight. So, like that would be the only thing that makes sense to me is that if you're like, because that's such a weird descriptive. Like if I was like standing at the other edge of the football field from Zell, and they're like, "Hey, how tall is that guy over there?" I'd be like, "I don't know." Listen, yeah, but you're saying inches. you're saying fucking football field, which is a hundred yards. Yeah, how far was he from this thing? A thousand yards. A thousand yards. A thousand yards. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, like he's joking. Ridiculous. They're like, "How big do you think it is?" He's like, oh, "From oh. here, it looks about." Well, let's say he's, it's about like a thousand. Yeah, he, that's what it says. It says he's five. That's, that's, that's what it says. I thought well, that was funny. He got he got within like five. He got within like five hundred feet or you know a thousand yards, whatever. Um, he's and like, then, it's about twelve now. Well, because it like he pulled he pulled <laughs> like a tight cool. turn. He, t- he pulled it's a tight turn. Bigger. <laughs> It's growing. <laughs> he just has no fucking depth perception at all. They're like, that's how just traveling works. It's like, this is why you were on strictly travel. Object seems to be appearing to grow. Good thing they had all those World War II pilots eating carrots, eh? Like, that yeah. fuck guy's got good eyes. He knows what he's looking this at. Like, he's, he's flying. He's like, they got some sort of ant army coming at us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, well, he said like he made a turn and he approached the thing from about like head on at about 5,000 feet 
and then he said that the thing went like 500 feet above him uh, over his plane. Up, yeah. And like then rapidly. he's saying, that, well, yeah. it was, he was going over his, like, so it's just like, it's just passing over him um, at 500 feet. And that's oh, when he's okay. like, I got, he's like six did, to eight inches. Like, that's what I, that's what he reckoned. Did it look like it was like maneuvering to go above him or was that just its normal trajectory? So um, when, when Gorman starts approaching this light, uh, Gorman claims that the the object appeared to be controlled by some type of intelligence or that it's, it's, it's maneuvers seem to be intelligently uh, dictated by something because like once, once he started like kind of maneuvering to get into place, like where he could better see it or like kind of follow it. He said that the, this light seemed to match every one of his moves and then exhibited like remarkable speed and agility for something that is just flying around up there. He's like, this is, this but is something that I don't know what this is, and, but it's still like following our rules of propulsion, right? Like it's not do it's not like Tic Tac where it's like, this doesn't make any well, fucking sense. Like it looks like it's no, some of the, some of the turns and stuff like he, I can't remember exactly the term he used, but he said he believed this object operated under the forces of inertia, but the way to it an turned. extreme, the way it turned, but to an extreme that humans couldn't capable of because this motherfucker tried to try to copy its turn passed out briefly he passed out in the air it. yeah he passed out and it was like oh i came back he's like oh shit <laughs> don't that, don't it looks, that it, it's, a little. it's just just like those roller coaster or those slingshot videos where person person passes out midair except you're sitting yeah. in a jet five thousand feet in the air yeah, chasing a, a fucking <laughs> light source Ball of light. Right? you come and to yours so, upside down the planes falling from the sky yeah and you're like holy shit so it's <laughs> like it this is so he's he's as he's trying to pace it, he can't pace this thing and follow it because it's turning, flying too fast, turning too great of a speed. So he he's like, okay, well, I'm going to start trying to cut it off. But right? it, like, but oh. it's still like moving somewhat towards our like it, like nothing at that time was capable of moving like that. But it still looks like it's moving like our tech technology would be. You know what yes. I mean? Like yes, it operates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it yeah. turns like it's something, but it's. It's too extreme for our current technology him. at this well, time. Well, no, for it, hit, like human. <laughs> a human. Well, but it's, it, it, I'm wondering though, because it makes me wonder, like this time would be perfect. This is post paperclip, right? Like this is yeah. right post paperclip. Like this could be some fucking technology that nobody had seen yet in 1948, right? I mean, I'm not saying that we have that technology even now. I mean, maybe we do. We just haven't seen well, it. Well, they had the Deglaca. End of the war. Took that tight. The Glock was a big, six, was, yeah, was but no, you got, but you got a six or eight inch Glocka now. <laughs> <laughs> well above average. Well above, above average. average. <laughs> yeah, flying around. Be like, be like they're like, you'll never be able to get a good Glock in your pocket, and he's like, we <laughs> <day>. watch. <laughs> we all got just, we all got pocket Glockas now. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so yeah, so as, as Gorman, as Gorman's trying to catch up to this, to this light, <laughs> like he is <laughs> from now on, when anyone asks me, Hey, how tall are you? I'm going to go. That depends how far you are from me. <laughs> are we talking right up close? Nose to nose? Or are you like a thousand yards away? Hmm. 500 feet. Like, <laughs> Uh, so, um, as as uh, Gorman is trying to catch up to this 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 light that he's this unidentified. I mean, it's an unidentified. It's a UFO. Um, when he's trying to catch up to this UFO, yeah, he's he's pacing this thing. He's pushing the P fifty one to like its limits. Like it is going to it's Matt, fast. Pushing it to the speed. danger zone, but yeah, yeah, he's in the danger zone. Like he's yeah. in oh, yeah. four hundred miles Kenny per Loggins hour. Is playing. He knows. Blasting, blasting. Yeah. Right. Kenny Loggins, Stan Bush, Mega Mix. Gorman's like, living dangerously yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, he he figures like he sees this this um, he sees the the UFO start to to bank left, and so he anticipates this, and so he says like, okay, I'm gonna be able to cut this corner real quick, and I'll be able to catch up to it. So mm -hmm. as he as he starts to cut the corner, he says that this light basically breaks a sharp right turn, comes doubles back, and starts coming at him straight straight on. And like to the point where Gorman is like, I, I like he didn't have any time to get out of the way. Like this thing's coming straight at him. So uh, like it, it broke so close to his thing. Like he actually ducked inside of his cockpit, thinking the thing was just gonna like clip off like the top of his plane. It's and like it's it trying just to went, scare him away. Like and it just, yeah. and it just went right over his head. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> um, so, you know, he actually like put the, he put the Mustang into a bit of a dive, uh, thinking that there was, he, he's pretty much like, this is going to be a midair collision. Like I'm going to, I'm going to tank this thing. And, um, but he said that it just went, whoosh, it just like passed right over pretty close over his canopy. And then he was able to like whip around and around his shoulder and he saw the light make another left turn and then, and then arc around for another head on pass with him. Um, fucking their chicken. <laughs> Uh, well uh, yeah it's like and so backing down (laughs) um instead of gorman having to break away this time he says that the light as it was coming towards him just broke straight up and disappeared just like took off vertically and took off and so it starts climbing up gorman ventured to the brinks of space and this is where (laughs) gorman's like First manned, unpropelled <laughs> spacecraft. You're not. You're not ready for this conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gor- Gorman is like, not today, buddy. And he yeah. said that he cl- he climbed in pursuit of this thing, which is, um, you know, you're going pretty. You're going into a straight up, you know, straight climb, climb. and um, so he got up to about fourteen thousand feet, like purely vertical, and then that's where he stalled. And nice. like, and okay, cl- pretty close. Um, which is like, we'll talk about. Like, we've talked about the Mantell incident, and the Mantell incident is basically that. Like, that's what happened. Um, you know, the guy was, or you know, that's what they think happened is that he climbed up after chasing a UFO. Um, and, and we've talked about that one before, where the pilot was climbing after the UFO, and then may you know the the prevailing theory is that he blacked out, and then you know, crashed, uh, went down, uh, into an uncontrolled dive, couldn't pull out of it. But, uh, you know, Gorman here was fortunate enough that just, he couldn't catch it. Like it just stalled out and managed to get out of the stall and then just never saw that object again. Um, after it took off into the, you know, gone into the atmosphere, gone. One, like one of the, another amazing thing is, is like this, this went on for like almost half an hour, Yep. him chasing this thing around the skies. And that, I had read that the people in the in the Piper Cub had mm-hmm. actually landed their plane, headed to the control tower because they had seen it in the air too, and had got up and they're all they're all like in the control tower with like binoculars, like watching this go down, yeah. being like on the radio with him, being like, "This is fucking crazy." Yeah, uh, yeah you had, zipping, zagging. You had the tower the operator uh, Lloyd zipping Chin. and zagging. <laughs> yeah, the wow. you had two uh, you had two tower operators who were witnessing uh, Gorman, you know, for better, you know, lack of a better, dog fighting with this with this UFO. Um, you had Lloyd Jensen and H E Johnson, and then you had the Piper Cub. Uh, you had the pilot and the passenger of the Piper Cub, uh, who is Dr. A.E. Cannon and the passenger Einar Nielsen. Uh, Why did we stop using like just the first two initials and last name? Yeah. Why? Like what? Can I go I by that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we had A.C. Slater for a while. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. It just At didn't catch on, I guess. Back. Yeah. I think we should. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be RJ. Sure. RJ? RJ. RJ Zell. Yeah. yeah. RJ Zell's like, I got too many. <laughs> I got fucking, I'd be AAL. <laughs> Al. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh you know gorman gorman came gorman is so rocked by what his experience like they said that it actually took him like a couple passes to actually land the plane uh to come back in for a landing when he was you know the the chase had concluded yeah, he's, he's gotten flashbacks of being up there with the luftwaffe like guys fucking get me out of here man he's just passed out he's just been the first man in space he's really yeah. this guy's pretty much the fucking he's last star this guy here. thought the earth was like, flat the whole time yeah <laughs> uh yeah, he as he was like as he was breaching thirteen five, he was like, "This is just one small step for man." One, and then he blacked out. Um, yeah, and the reports of of uh, Gorman being, you know, uh, very disturbed by this are, are given to us by Major DC Jones, who's the commander of the one hundred seventy eighth Fighter Squadron at Hector International Airport, the one that he was he was landing at, um, and that uh, you know. He, it's just something that you're like, oh, like I, I couldn't catch this thing. I, I don't, I don't know how you, you would react to this. Where you're like, you're flying one, of, you're flying probably at the time like one of the most like advanced like fighter planes, kind of like. And you're an experienced yeah. pilot, and you're like, there's no way this thing can. You're like one. No it's not the Canadians. It's not the concept Canadian of vampires. measurements yeah. or yeah. fucking distance whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know why he passed out? Because he got up there and he's like, why is everybody so small now? Yeah. Why are the house is so small? What's that going on? Six down inches there? tall. What the I'm fuck? Huge. <laughs> I'm growing. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? 
just passed the They've done something to me. I'm huge. I'm too heavy. Told you, you're not ready for this conspiracy. <laughs> the further in the atmosphere you get, you just start stretching. The smaller Earth gets, and the bigger you get. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. It's a story of God game came to be. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're not allowed on the moon because you're giants. The yeah. Earth is just like this big when you yeah. get there. You can squish it with your finger. And yeah, you, yeah. Right? Have anyone gets up there? Squishing your head. I'm squishing, squishing your head. Squishing your planet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's like he he had to obviously because of the length and everyone involved, he had to submit a report and like, he's, you know, he's talking, he's like no sound, uh, you know, no exhaust rail, no visible means of propulsion. Like he's you flying this. It's interesting though. Cause what you're saying with Zell, like he did notice though, as the fucking craft started moving faster, the lights got brighter. Yeah. As, as this thing would give a little, uh, like get up and go that it would brighten up. And that's what right? Zell was talking about. Uh, yes. Propulsion last time with fucking bright lights and the like lights. Maybe the are lights the are the propulsion. Lights yeah. are the propulsion. So you give it more juice, shines a little brighter. Yeah. Uh, I like it. So yeah, uh, like three days later, you had uh, on October four hundred miles per hour. Couldn't catch this thing. No, it's. Uh, I, I, I remember at some point he said that he's following it and it's getting away from him. Yeah. Like it is this thing like he estimated was going way faster than he was and he just like couldn't catch up to it. So wait, is, is he in a prop a prop plane? Yeah, a P fifty one Mustang. That seems yeah. faster than I thought they could go for some. Reason. They're pretty fast. They're pretty fast. <laughs> this big old engine on that thing. <laughs> I make, it makes sense, but I just for some reason when I think of planes from World War Two yeah. Well you think under I, like under I feel like well, I just Wright I feel brothers. like they ju- they just got the jet going, like they just invented the jet, right? Right at the end of the war. I was, I was like, Oh, so these prop planes what are they going? Two, three hundred knots? Nope. Yeah. Five hundred? <laughs> Jesus, okay. P fifty one is such a it's such a smart looking plane. Like I, I, yeah, it looks it's like, badass. I love when they put the yeah, when they put the awesome logos graphics. That's on like it. though it's more improved than the Spitfire, right? Uh yeah. Like that Wasn't one that the P fifty one the P fifty one was like that that was the that was like the World War II. Yeah, that was our the workhorse. Like that was the at the end, but it was one of the advanced. I think at the European theater, except for like the P thirty eight Lightning, maybe like the. Um, the it was kind of like the man. that was like the toughest plane what for a like cool and looking plane. for the army. Yeah, I guess really the cool. Air Force hadn't been formed yet. So and like, did, they this had guy that. was pushing that thing to its limits. Mm. Dude, you, you got that plane, and then it, it evolves into the modern Cessna. <laughs> just a yeah, shitty you little castrated stuff. it. You fucking castrated you destroyed it. Destroyed it. Right? <laughs> right? I'm just saying Douglas, it looks so Douglas cool. Made and the, then you, Douglas made the P51. I think. But then it? you but just, you, just now, you have, now modern Cessnas look so shitty. Like they're so yeah, boring. Like that, they should just get that. Everyone they're should not fighter planes. Like <laughs> well, they should be Dan. They, they should, should all be, look yeah. like fighter planes. Right. Kind of kind of like guns. All guns should look like assault. They have like those racing planes. Like they have the racing plane. <laughs> all guns should look like assault guns because they're all okay. cool then. Yeah. Right? Uh, like Nerf guns, I, assault guns. I can't, yeah. Exactly. I can't argue with that logic. It's perfect. Yeah. No, it. when you're a kid, you don't want these fake <laughs> toys. You want you the want fucking the badass thing, assault Nerf gun. Right? I want to be, That's I want to look, walking down the street and see a kid in the yard and not sure if he's got an M16 or, <laughs> or a Nerf a BB gun. gun. That's yeah. what I want. Right, that's what. Well, that's then the you can move, you well, can you move know, down here, buddy. You know, because they have a fucking. You know, because they have that little orange tip on them. No, no. Oh, you spray paint, first thing you do, you spray paint that. Black. Dude, I remember. Dude, I remember back in my day, like freaking. Uh, I went over to somebody's house and they had like they used to have the little electric, like the battery operated squirt guns, right? The ones that went little Mac Ten, right? And no, they had like a they had a full like MP5. It was like an MP5 one. It was amazing. It was so cool. And I was like, a little Mac Ten one. No, no orange tips or nothing. You know, back in those days, you're just like now you're now you're getting shot for that. Now you're definitely getting murdered. Thanks. Uh, uh, so yeah, he's, um, so there isn't a, a formal investigation is like opened and they will be like, okay, like we need to take a report from Gorman. Cause this is, this is nuts. So all these people saw this and like, what, what could this possibly be? Um, so an intelligent, again, uh, intelligence unit headed by major Paul Kubala, Kubala, uh, arrived in Fargo and questioned Gorman and sat down with him, uh, like, like, along with Cannon and the other long? two controllers, like three like, days, like day. two days, like no, three days. Yeah, it was. Fast. October four, like October first, was the event, and then October fourth is when they arrived. Uh, yeah, uh, to they go were talk on to the him. shit quick. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm curious. I'm curious if October first, 1948, was a Friday, and then they were there on a Monday. Let's check. 
<laughs> what day was October? I think I tried to look it up. I think I actually 19. tried to look that up. What is it, 48? Uh, yeah, within 48 hours. 1948. Yeah. Or within 48 hours. 1948. Yeah. yeah. Or 49. Was it 49? 48. 48. It was a Friday. That's yeah, the only the reason they weren't there the next day. It's like, <laughs> fuck. Weekend. Nah, fuck. So weekend, we'll be there Monday morning. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Off the clock, buddy. Because I was government. like, I was like, two days? Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on the that, weekend. Uh, you talking yeah, about? Monday morning, first <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we do the deep dive on alien theorists theorizing, yeah. right? We yeah. l- leave no stone unturned. Yeah, it's there on a Monday. Um, so, uh, and this and this is the Air Force uh, Air Force Intelligence, right? So this is federal. The Air National Guard would have been state, like it would have been like state level. So you know, you have like the federal government coming in and being like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Um, and so yeah, why they go ahead flying and- erratically for half an hour above the skies, Flying fucking around. buzzing football. <laughs> Friday night lights. You get buzzing uh, the fucking college game all night. Uh, so Gorman went ahead and gave college his. Plays on Saturday. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's on Saturday. Um, uh, Gorman went ahead and gave his statement to the Air Force intelligence officer, and you know, giving a trying to give as much description as he could as to what what was going on up there. So he, it, commenting on the object and its appearance and its and its uh and its description, he said that it emitted no sound. So there's no sound, audible sound that he could hear. Um, there's no odor. Like a, he couldn't eat, like like an exhaust trail. Like it, it didn't give yeah. off any exhaust. So he's like he couldn't <laughs> like, smell that. He's yeah. sitting there in, <laughs> in his cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> I get nothing. <laughs> he doesn't well, smell like Nazis. <laughs> well, if, he, if, he, if he's in his cockpit, all he's smelling is the engine of his own plane, just yeah. fucking burning fume. <laughs> um, because are, are those open air? Or they have a no? They got a fucking cockpit. They got a fuck slide for it. No. Yeah, like fourteen thousand feet. And he would have died. You have a mask on. <laughs> it would have been freezing. He would have fucking froze. I have wear a toque. I guess when you get that big, uh, it's not as cold. You got to wear a toque. You got your earmuffs on. You got it you all. You got a about. scarf. Oh, I got my yeah. mitts. Hold on, I'm at thirteen thousand feet. Better put on my mitts. <laughs> um. And so Gorman, you know, again, said that, you know, he was pushing this Mustang to over 400 miles per hour. And this object not only outran him, but also outmaneuvered him at like every every spot. Like it was not even the thing didn't even look taxed or you can say it was just effortless that it was that it was a way that it was kind of just almost toying with him. Like it was just like, yeah, okay, like you want to do this? Like I think it was like at some point it was like mimicking like his like his maneuvers and stuff, kind of just like pacing them and just stuff. And then when he would whenever he would speed up, like we said, like it would speed up. Um and then or it seemed to be anyways. Um and so like quotes from Gorman are are like we have some quotes from like his reports and it's like uh I am convinced that there was definite thought behind its maneuvers. Um I am further convinced that the object was governed by the laws of inertia because its acceleration was rapid, but not immediate. And although it was able to turn fairly tight at considerable, considerable speed, it still followed a natural curve. Um, So it, from his from his perspective like this thing was just like it was banking like it wasn't it wasn't like just like making 90 degree turns or stuff yeah it it was stuff that he couldn't do uh in his plane but it still seemed to be doing uh, obeying the laws of inertia on our planet like as we know them (laughs) yeah but like with banking can you if you had a better plane can you bank harder but wouldn't you exert the same amount of g-forces on yourself though yeah you would but like it's like he's banking so hard that he's blacking out and he's saying this thing's turning way tighter in a natural curve. Even if you were in a better plane, wouldn't you be, you would experience the same amount of G forces. So like, couldn't you? Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, you're, but you're, but you're talking about, yeah, you're ticking no, yeah, so. like Andrew's yeah. point. That's either technological or you're thinking in human terms. Like if you, if you, terms. if you're thinking of it's a human piloting this, then yes. But if it's a, if it's, you know, artificial intelligence is my, my go-to cause you know, that's how I go. Um, but well, with the, the size, you too, are kind of makes sense. That's what right? I am. That yeah, makes sense. That but it could also be up. You know, if it's a you know, six to eight inches, it's a very tiny person, and like maybe they're just used to very <laughs> higher G force. I don't know. <laughs> people from Orion's. Belt it's like a Lego <laughs> man, like a little Lego dude, man. Those guys who take serious G's. Um, um, hey, before we before we get into the, um, you know, the official reports and, and you know and what is said and, and where this goes. Um, why don't we take a break? But before we go to break, I had heard that there was maybe some like unreleased documentary footage 
like on the scene. I, I think maybe they have body cams. dramatic or recreations here. Is that what you're right. talking Zell, about? Did we have anything? We have found something through the, through the, the ATT archives. Dark the, web. The ATT <laughs> archives. Yeah, it's been submitted. It's been encrypted and encryption. Uh, we're going to decipher that right now. Oh, hey there, George. Welcome back, buddy. Glad to have you back. You made it home safe from the war, eh? That's great. Uh, <laughs> what can we do for you? Just, oh, yeah, it's really good to be home. Oh, yeah, George, you boy, we're going to get you back in the air. Don't you worry, bud. <laughs> oh, thanks, gents. You know, it's just, I really, it was, it's a nice night out there. I'd love to get up there and fly some miles, you know? Yeah, George, I know you got to get them night hours, eh? So we got one of them gas stop ready to go, hey? Oh, you fellas are just too sweet. Uh, geez, hey, George, just to touch base here quick, buddy. You're not really having those crippling nightmares or headaches or anything going on like crazy like that anymore, are you? Hey, pal. Georgie? Oh, just when my wife's talking, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh geez. Oh, yeah. You're oh, always been a kidder, eh? Hey, cracking you up, George. Oh, okay. All yeah, right, give me those keys. <laughs> All right, but hey, listen, so Georgie, he's about to go up in the sky there. You're going to see him. We're going to go to the tower quick, and we're going to get that. Remember that big welcome back balloon we got for him there, that really nice one from the corner store? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. It's, it's perfect. I think it's yeah, it should be good. Let me put it up yeah, there. So as soon as he's by the tower there, we just cut it, let it up there, and he'll see it. And, you know, and we'll get on the air and just say, hey, welcome back, Georgie. We're happy to have you, bud. Oh, he'll like that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too, eh? Tower, Tower, this is Gorman. Go ahead, Gorman. Oh, I'm just having us uh, the nicest flight up here, you know. It's just lovely. Thanks again. Hey, yeah, uh, release the release the balloon there, eh? Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's going up. It's going. It's going up. Hey, uh, hey, Gorman, there, but uh, you don't happen to see anything strange up in the sky, hey, but hey. No, I nothing. Just a little little cub down there. Just uh, clear skies. Nothing to report. None of them Canadian vampires, you know. Nothing like that, hey. Well, just take a quick look around. You never know, hey. <laughs> Tower. This is Gorman. Go ahead, Gorman. Yeah. Is there anything else up in the sky with me? I don't know, Gorman. You tell us, buddy. Hey? Uh, there's something up here with me. Whoa, hey. hey, hey, Tower! It's uh, it's General Milton. Uh, we have oh, ahead, General Milton. I, I have uh, I have word that we have an unannounced takeoff from the runway, and I was just wondering who uh, who decided to go up on a late night training mission, or or what happened here. Oh, we just got Georgie up there in the sky. Remember that big balloon that we got you to pitch on? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's not it's not Georgie Gorman, is it? Of course it is. That yeah. he, he suffers from crippling nightmares, and he's actually been grounded from all air travel. Well, you know, cop, it's we, the only way to get back at to it is getting up there, right? Like, you just gotta, just gotta Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let him get up there, but don't, uh, don't play any pranks on him. Well, of course not, eh? Tower! <laughs> Tower! It's Garmin! <laughs> I'm in pursuit! Georgie, it's a hey. jabs, they're back! What? They're Georgie, back. maybe just tip, take a step back there, bud. Just say, uh, get a good look at whatever's up there with you, yeah? Oh, a I'm flying fast! Back. I'm going to turn it around! Georgie, uh, why don't we work on those rescue breaths, hey, bud? Three seconds in and it's, one second. It's turning out, around! Hey? It's coming right at me! Ah! 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 Just miss me! Well, I think we might, uh, but I think we might, uh, you know, gave Georgie a set of the dizzies here. I'm a little worried about the guy. Firing missiles! Hey, pal, we put them in the unarmed ship, eh? Oh, yeah, there's no there's no bullets or nothing on that plane. We made sure of that. Okay. So is, it's he going up. is he making it's those sounds with his mouth? I think so. You know, 
The weirdest thing about this whole thing here, hey, about this, the plane hasn't even really moved. It's just hovering. Ah! Ah! Hey, Tower. General Milton oh. again. Go ahead, General. Uh, you got Georgie Boy still out there flying. Well, I mean, he was in the air for a good 27 minutes, but, I mean, for the last hour, he's just been sitting on the runway there making airplane sounds. I told you Jordy had crippling nightmares. Oh, he's just working through it now. It's it's okay. We just let him go. He'll tire himself out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, ah! Ah! Does somebody maybe want to call his wife, hey? And that's pretty much how it went. Mm. That, is, that is the uh, there's the official tower audio uh, that we have yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm gonna say that's better than the Discovery Channel's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. probably and, more uh, realistic we'll be, too. <laughs> we'll be right back after the spear break.
Fur back. back. Um, so with Gorman making his statement and then the consequent, you know, subsequent uh, investigations that went into this because nobody knew what he saw up there. Nobody was really sure. And even though you had, you know, this is one of the sightings that we like because it has corroboration. You had four other people, at least four other people. And then by some reports, like there were, there were other people who witnessed him chasing this object um, through the night sky. Uh, it's, it's obviously something that was interesting. And to me, when, when we, when I pulled this one up, I was like, Hey, this is like, this is kind of nuts that this one was seemingly other people saw it or they just saw how upset he was. Yeah. Like, well, um, he was awfully upset. Taste there obviously was something up there, but had I, to be, I'm surprised that this one like didn't catch as much traction because it was, well, I mean, I guess it is, overshadowed to some extent by the Mantell UFO incident we talked about, which happened in January 1st of that year um, uh, or January 7th, sorry, January 7th of that same year. But that would, to me, that would be like, well, that's nuts. Cause it's like two in the same year of people chasing uh, UFOs. Uh, yeah, and like, like <laughs> they should just, they, those aircraft. two incidents should be spoken within like the same, like the same sentence. Like you just put those two together. Um, so now there, there are some, explanations which have been put forth about what possibly Gorman would have saw besides it being, you know, perhaps some kind of extraterrestrially extraterrestrial intelligently in uh, controlled craft. So um, one of the things that, that came out is like within, within a few days, um, <laughs> uh, Gorman, uh, or, well, back in Fargo, at least, back in Fargo, you had the air weather service, which actually kind of put out a, a statement that they said that they had released a type of lighted weather balloon about 10 yeah, minutes a tactical, before a tactical weather balloon. <laughs> um, so weather balloons were big. What back size then. was it? Was it between six, six and eight inches? <laughs> um, so uh, about 10 minutes before they said they released this balloon. Now, you know, weather balloons, this is a thing like these, these were balloons were big back then. We had project mogul. Like that was happening. They're still big, um, man. Just they're a couple big. months ago. Yeah. They made we a just shot three resurgence. fucking ones down love, for no we reason. Love we love yeah. balloons. And, uh, <laughs> um, but, but of course, like if you're thinking like, like any kind of normal person, you'd be like, Oh, like a balloon, but it, you know, it was maneuvering like this thing he was chasing. You'd be able he to was, fucking, it was at one point he said at pushing the fucking plane to 400 miles per hour, it was pushing away from him to the point where he was like, the only way I can fucking catch this thing is it's starting to bank and I'll bank earlier and try to meet, like cut him off. Or it off. Um, that, that's what he said. And he did. And he was reporting to air traffic. And they're going to say balloon. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. What made you think this is, you know, it couldn't have been a balloon. Like, it's it was moving like this. So, added on to that, compounded into the, the explanation, is that you had some investigators noted that, that Jupiter, the, you know, the planet, had been uh, showing a exceptionally bright at, at this time uh in the night sky and like the, the few days like just, those days they were like venus they couldn't say venus in retrograde so they're like what other planets up there tonight <laughs> um so but the the explanation kind of goes with like maybe those two things like the 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 lighted balloon like the lighted piece on the balloon and then jupiter like shining bright uh, may have like combined to make this whole experience uh, seem like Gorman was actually chasing sprinkling <laughs> a little PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that he's... Gorman was chasing chasing the balloon, and then like you know he, he went past it, and you know just his perspective and his perception from his cockpit, it's like his own maneuvers, like just the way that he was moving, seemed to have the thing going fast, which we kind of saw uh, during. During, now you reminded me like of the balloon stuff where they said like, oh, it's going really fast and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, it's like it's the, everybody looking at the camera like, oh, that thing's traveling so fast. Like, no, it's the camera, like the camera moving at a certain speed. And then yeah, you see but that the, thing and whatever. The difference, is, the difference is with that and this is is that's like cameras on the ground. And this is this is, this is a child's sh- balloon. This eight is inches. A, this is. Yeah. And this is a motherfucker in a in a plane. That's built for speed and he's chasing it. And then the, the like whole story for me is like, cause like the whole story of them being like, ah, oh, you know, it's a mix of a balloon and Jupiter and he got it a little mixed up and the fucking 
big old whoopsie right it doesn't make sense when you look at like all the turns and stuff he's making because like at any point jupiter is a fixed star not moving right light source balloon that's just floating there he's they're saying he's flying by and when he flies by it's the turbulence from the plane is throwing this balloon around while well, balloons don't just fucking then travel at 500 miles per hour you know in front of a plane after you fly past it and then he's making a turn gets mixed up and he's like there's jupiter after it it's so far away six to eight inches and then <laughs> jupiter sh- jupiter just readjusts in the sky straight up and he's like i gotta go to space to chase it right like uh, it, but, but jupiter doesn't buzz right above the head jupiter doesn't like drop below you <laughs> you know what I mean? the balloon doesn't drop below. like it's just this like wash of this thing of being like this is what it is and it's for this long had, right for yeah, the, that you, length of the encounter yeah for because like what minutes. like even for fucking what do you say ball lightning ball lightning doesn't last for 27 minutes well and you would think you would think if that if this is a bit of jupiter the in the control tower looking and he's like flying in the wrong direction he's flying at jupiter and the fucking balloon's still in the sky they would have been like well we're seeing the light behind you you looks to us like you're flying at a star my friend right like there was some, there's none of that and this is this is someone who has a lot of air experience and like i mean project sign was there and they were they investigated this and and, and look when you say that he has a lot of air experience the majority of this man's air experience has been evolved with fucking combat. So when he's in the air, there's confrontation. Yeah. Right? So maybe that plays into it a little bit, that now that he's in the air, he's anticipating confrontation, even when it's not there. So when he does see some type of anomaly, like... A little ready for anything kind of thing. Yeah, like he's just like fucking hypervigilant, right? Like he sees something and automatically assumes and his brain goes to being like, oh, there's danger up there. Okay, d- uh, sure, I I'll I'll concede. I'm to not that arguing point. for it. I'm just no, saying no, maybe. I, I concede like to that's... that point of someone just being hyper vigilant. Just experienced the war. You were a year after the war's closer. Closer. No, a couple years after. Now it's 1948. Uh, and uh, you, you, the thing for me is though, there's one thing to be ready for anything, and then there's one thing to think you're chasing something, and to be describing the the movements that this other craft is doing, right? you're talking about someone who's full on fucking delusional at this point. And if that was the case, if that was the case, this guy would be grounded. And we know that for, he wasn't the case. He goes on to be a fucking Colonel. Like he, he goes on to have a long fucking career. Well, so it's like, if this guy was delusional, every time he's up in the air, he's fucking going nuts and seeing these things. And, ah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Well, but he saw, he obviously saw something that maybe triggered something, you know? <laughs> Well, he I'm goes on. He goes on to have that. a long career only because he followed the advice of the A Air Material Command, um, which um, told him after after Gorman actually received some information from a, a, like a kind of a, a weather observer, kind of an enthusiast uh, named George Sanderson, that basically said that the time and the altitudes didn't fit and the wind direction was wrong for it to be a balloon. And Gorman kind of went on and said, like, yeah, like I, what I saw wasn't a balloon or whatever. The Air Material Command, uh, it's it's reported that they warned Gorman, like they verbally warned him that say like not to divulge any more information about this event um, or you would be subject to court martial. So and Gorman went ahead and took that and just, you know, he never shut the he fuck up, never, ever commented about this again. Now, close friends of his. It's been reported through friends of friends and reporters that like people who have known him or are close to him have said that he has said and has always maintained that wasn't a fucking balloon right but it this one's crazy to me because i'm like this is like if there i would love for the like the congressional ufo hearings to look into this one because obviously they had more data on it and this is to me when you look at this one and what we know with like cover-ups and stuff they just told this guy to stop fucking talking Hmm. obviously he saw something and it was like shut the fuck up it was a weather balloon. You made a mistake. You got stuck between the planets, right? Keep your mouth shut. And they moved him through the ranks because he followed rank and file, right? Like he's like, yep, yeah, all right. Yes, yeah, sir. That guy's a patriot. Okay. <laughs> Talking about patriots um, last week. This guy's a patriot. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that like kind of the like the military would come in and tell him, like, hey, be quiet. Because it's like you around this time, you have so much stuff going on that it's like this could have been some other super secret project. Like this could have been a project mogul. This could have been something like, you know, one of the, 
uh, one of the myriad of other special projects that they had going on, like detect, you know, nuclear detection balloons and all of that stuff. Like it could have been something like that. And they were probably just trying to, you know, I, I could assume that they were just trying to play it safe. Maybe like that's, I'm, I'm just arguing right on their, on their right point. Now, I've never been more sure that this wasn't a balloon. There's no way. There's no way that was a balloon with the original descriptions of his report. Balloons. There's no fucking jet streams that take them on intelligent flight paths. Right, where they can fool pilots, you know what I mean? Like, to fool Jupiter and a balloon in the sky is fucking ludicrous to me. He chased it straight up. That's the only portion where I could be like, at maybe at that point, but then he went straight up because he saw Jupiter, but he knew he was going straight up. It's not like he was like confused, he knew what he was doing, he was chasing the object up. And yeah, and a again, tiny balloon. Yeah, and again, it surprises me that the the Mantel Six UFO incident just isn't tiny. It's well above Discuss average, this. above Jeez. average size balloon. Yes, um, it was just air. The air <laughs> <laughs> all through the sky. It just yeah, just jet stream. Just like it was just like going along on the. Now ditch I can subscribe. To um, but how how like the Mantel incident isn't brought up like along with this one is crazy because it's like January seventh, nineteen forty eight. Like the almost exact same thing happened. Mantel in the same fucking plane, like a F fifty one D Mustang, like same same plane almost. You know, and like how are they not just like he's like hey yeah Mantel saw something I saw and man dude and Mantel went on like after this we, we talked about Mantel's like career as a you know career but like his whole ufo thing like he wanted to do a bunch of talks and he investigated the the one the what was the other one it was the one on the the west coast the, the washington one um uh we talked about that one the the one where the guy got his like dog melted or whatever uh oh yeah that's right <laughs> um, on the boat? oh uh kenneth arnold or whatever Oh no, the no the island. Um, or the, yeah. Oh no, maybe I'm thinking of Kenneth Arnold actually. Yeah, because Kenneth the that, Kenneth that's Arnold, dog right went overboard. Or uh, the uh, shoot, I can't remember the top of my head. Yeah, um, it says him and his son and his dog. Right. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, it, like Kenneth Arnold went to so same thing. Like Kenneth Arnold sighting, like the you know OG UFO, like very, one of the very first ones, if not the first one that see actually flying saucers, kind of. Um, like that was the year before. Like that was 1947, um, you know. So it's like, I, I like I don't know what what's going on where you have these two events like you know months apart, but like in the same year, and they should have all they should both be. And I, yeah, I'm on Drayden's side. Like, yeah, I would like a congressional investigation to like reopen like what what the heck's going on with this well, one? Let's like see these the two reports from this, like the original reports from this event, man, would be phenomenal to see. And the the fact that it's like. Uh, yeah, you had multiple witnesses seeing seeing this thing, chasing these things, and um, like, what what are they? I mean, to me, it sounds you know a lot similar to the reports of you know Foo Fighters, like that kind of whole that whole phenomenon, um, where you have these bright lights that were that are pacing World War II fighter planes. Like, you know, is, is it like do these extraterrestrials have some kind of preoccupation with our World War II, the P fifty one Mustang? Like, that's a nice plane. Like, you know, it's like they're just like following them around everywhere they go. Um, well, it's our peak technology at the time, um, right? so they want to know about it. They want to see it. I just I, one of our most I don't know. It's peak technology, but it's like prolific. And I still like the P thirty eight Lightning. That's still my favorite. <laughs> I mean, you got vampires up there too. You know why they want to pay that? No reports right, from the vampires. The, like the pulse, the pulsing. He described when this thing moved. The light got brighter. Right balloons don't do that yeah it's it's it's, it's something like because because the thing remember, like, the mylar the, balloon the reflection of the light <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the well because reflection. it's like i'm saying like like i could see it happening like i, I mean i could i can conceive of a situation where he fly like he said the, it came right at his the first when he came at it the first time like it, he said it was coming right towards him and it went right over his head like it went right over his head at 500 sure. feet right sure. so he Just lost like sight of it Colombian model that Colombian model one that could be a balloon that 100 percent. i'll agree with you on that one where it's a stationary where you don't really know because the plane's moving you get a side shot close by you're like i don't know what that was and that plane was also moving considerably so the model plane was using is uh the model in the plane her plane not the model plane um 
was moving considerably slower than yeah. probably uh, the Mustang. Than the Mustang. Mustang's moving like 400. They're probably like not that fast. Like maybe confiscated 100. Nazi technology. Confiscated could be. Nazi technology. That is 60, Possibly, 68 right? inches long. Pocket to Glocka. That, yeah, pro, yeah, pocket to Glocka. Pocket to Glocka. Pocket Glocka. Yeah. Uh, Zell fucking so, hit it on I mean, the that's because that's the only thing for me in the whole case is this the size of it. If he actually if he referred to it as it's legit like a it's a like a tea saucer, like a little fucking saucer plate. That's how big it is. And well, it's at a thousand, I wonder if like that's a, 16. I wonder if I wonder like if there was plate, like, like a mid sized dinner plate. Uh, this would be something to eight like inches. I, we would, we would dinner plate's 12 know. inches, Dan. Like a mid, like saying like a small, like a like a appetizer. Dinner plate, plate in Texas is 18 inches, like a yeah. like a <laughs> fucking platter, like an appetizer yeah. plate. Like, like one pound of meat in Texas is four pounds of meat. I'm just saying there's the, the fact that it was so small. I just, I don't know. What is that? Is that like the first drone? Yeah. Some miniature drone, alien drone. Okay. Because of all, so, of all the ones we talk about, it's always, it's erratic movement, zero to a thousand miles an hour in a blink of an eye or 50,000 feet to sea level. Okay. And this one seems it's much, um, it's moving fast, but predictable. But seems Reasonable. Like. Reasonable. Okay, so hold on. Listen to this. When flying, the pilot needs to know an aircraft's uh, estimated size. They do so by multiplying the total number of inches measured by the scale of miles to inches. So possibly he was taking a measurement, being like, I'm this far out, it's six to eight inches. So then inches, I reckon. So what does that translate right. to then? Um, so multiplying the total number of inches. What's our so flying aircraft calculator? So how how all you got to do is cross multiply and divide. Yeah, I got to yeah. like calculate that. Throw a little bed mass in there. How, how far did he say he was? A thousand, a thousand yards. A thousand yards. How many yeah. miles is that? Wasn't well, well. He's a thousand yards, but also five hundred feet when it came above him. So it depends when he said it was six to eight inches. Yeah. Even at five hundred feet. So in that case, you should probably put pie in there, hey? <laughs> yeah, you probably pie yeah. it up. I, I, I don't know. I've already lost Avogadro's number. Throw that in there. Yeah. What's you a, load what's up a, the quadratic? We got to get that pilot that used to call in all the time. Oh, cowboy pilot. Cowboy pilot. And let us know if that's a, like, is that a, is maybe that's a thing. Because I'm like, maybe that's just a measurement that they took. Like they would look in their thing and be like, this is, it's six to eight inches at this distance. And then they'd work that out later about what the size was. Like, I just don't like. The six to eight inches, I don't think that, and I, I might be wrong. Maybe he was fucking, maybe this object was really small. Bang on, buddy. But what I'm, what it's I think it drawing. was, I think this was a, a measurement scale. If he's like, this is six to eight inches, and that we've just never seen that calculation done at how big this object is. Yeah, but there's be. way smarter people that have looked at this than us that would have put that together. So, oh, buddy, I don't know. Sometimes you need a dummy to know. point out the obvious. This is true. Right? Maybe Braden just did the world a favor here. Yeah. So, uh, Braden, in your, in your expert op in opinion, then, let's say at 1,000 yards, 6 to 8 inches, going at 500 plus nautical miles, what's the size of this aircraft? Well, because I don't really know how the. This will live works. for it, forever on the internet now. You are, you are deciding how big this oh, UFO no. is. It's up to you. So no th how, how, far, how many miles is 1,000 yards? That's not a, a mile. That's not a that's mile. That's not yet. a mile. Is it close to a mile? It's like, no. Maybe over half. Uh, I want to say a mile. 1, like it's one thousand seven hundred and sixty yards in a mile. I think that was about, uh, yeah. Okay, so you have three. Cool. So, yeah, so you got a weird point, fraction for this. Point mile. seven yards. So if it's miles? eight inches, let's go the big eight inches. Point seven. Uh, yeah, always round up. Six inches. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the eight works. inches. It's an eight inch craft. Yeah, but then if you so the actual the size miles, is smaller. The actual <laughs> size is smaller you than the craft the, that you're seeing. It's, it's like you you're going the wrong the way. You times it by the miles, which is no, go the other way. Then it's small. I don't know how. It so works. the craft. So you've, you've heard it here first. Braden has said the craft at distance is actually smaller than the craft in the cockpit. <laughs> For somehow. Somehow it goes backwards and it shrinks. The... Yeah, I All right, you heard it here first.
<laughs> the size don't. of this craft was actually five inches. In Braden's expert opinion. Self-proclaimed expert. I, yeah. Was it last case file? The one before that, you proclaimed to be an expert. So Yeah. That's, that dude with that fucking bug on the security camera is being vindicated right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. yeah Braden can't tell the sizes or thing. That bug could have been huge. <laughs> <laughs> there, I'm a, I, now I'm not so much, so much concerned about like UFOs, but this giant bug that's roaming around in that area. <laughs> this guy's oh shit. Uh shit. yeah, I just don't I don't know how the calculation works to figure it out. That's uh, my issue. So I like don't that's a math issue, not my issue. <laughs> math hasn't caught up uh, with the science. Good. That's all good. Someone um, put uh, Brain's uh, numbers to peer review and see what you come up with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, you can, if you can multiply eight times 0. 0.7 and get a better number than me, you let me know. Okay? <laughs> um, it's, it's just, this one is, to me, is paint the picture of, like, them hushing this story up. Like, he never talks about it ever again. Ever. And it's just dead in the water. It's, yep, balloon. And mixed with v or Jupiter. Yep. And like, that's it. And he, he never comments it publicly ever. Yeah. Dude ever was trying to make fucking Colonel. Dude. And like, yeah. And then he, he became, was, yeah, he was threatened the hard. Well, I mean, is he still alive? No. Um, oh, God damn. I, I would say that it's like, yes. So at least today so far, uh, as, as it would appear is that with, with arrow, you know, with the, the anomalous aircraft, uh, recovery, whatever. Um, like now that they've now that they've kind of revamped like their whistleblower protections and these things like you know maybe you will get i mean i mean how many stories have we gone over that that this is always the kind of the just the what happens this is just this is the plot of every ufo encounter yeah. where it's like you know a military service member sees something really weird they say hey uh you know i saw something weird and then you know the higher ups are like hey shut the fuck up you um, didn't see nothing you want your pension? Shut up. Um, which is like, again, I can understand because maybe th there could be something top secret. There could be something that they're letting out that people, they don't want people to know about. And not, not necessarily the American people, but just like our enemies in general you know, about capabilities of certain things or whatever. You don't, or, you don't want them to have that information. If they, but, like, imagine they think this is the Russians or something in the cold. Like they're starting to worry. Like they don't want to like, buddy. Yeah. Right? they don't want to, they don't want to be like, Hey, the fucking, we're getting buzzed. <laughs> Over North fucking Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> so there's Russian something. Dakota. Secret planes. So I would yeah, say there's some. Canada, yeah. They would come in through Canada. And it's like, I would say like there is some justification for like operational security. So OPSEC, like it, there is some justification there that could be like, hey, just stop talking about this stuff right now. Uh, like there's a bunch of stuff going on that like you don't know about. And maybe you should just like not talk about this and we don't have to take you to court. And otherwise you might end up at court martial for something you know whatever yeah for for, um, for something yeah just the a vague threat and they're and they're trying to probably play it on it they're trying to play it like you know on the safe side i would suppose that's the giving them giving the benefit of the doubt naturally yeah. but um but with arrow and stuff now with with the, with the whistleblowers and the kind of like the the unified uh reporting system that they're still kind of i think working out uh is like now this is like this won't happen or this shouldn't happen um yeah where it's, it's like if they're going to come out, and it'll probably still happen because there is still stuff out there that, you know, pilots might see that they're not supposed to see um, what you saw. You did not see. Um, I, I Dan, I'm with you that I think this one should be talked about far more. <laughs> well, you're not going to make Colonel, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you better shut up if you want that promotion. <laughs> You're not getting off base housing. <laughs> like, fuck you. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, but and like I said, there, to strike a more hopeful tone to be like, yeah, maybe more stuff will come out in more recent because we do. Uh, they're working on it. It seems to be that they're putting together something that would be like, okay, like you can talk about this stuff now. And now, I mean, that's just the environment now as it has been the last yeah. couple of years has kind of been like, you know, you know, bit by bit people are becoming more and more accepting of pilots coming out and saying like, Hey, I saw some weird stuff up there and not having, not really being afraid or, you know, of, of some sort of repercussion or being like, you know, a, some tacit retaliation from the higher ups being like, Oh yeah, we're going to have to ground you for a while, buddy. You got to go take a, you're going to have to go take some, uh, some tests, uh, to make sure 
you're not crazy, you know, whatever. Um, you know, you don't have that stuff and there's not so much a fear of, of that kind of, uh, that reper- retaliation coming for you. So you can talk about this stuff now, which is, you know, I hope we can talk about these things and because then we won't have a podcast and people don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Keep spinning um, it out. <laughs> Take a video though. High so definition. Did we, did we have a fear rate of the week? We didn't talk about it, but there is a nice review. Ooh, I like, I like people saying nice things. Unless you got something else, because we didn't. No, no, we, you go nope, ahead. Nice things, you get there out of the week. No, I don't have it. I just remember oh, reading it know. earlier. Oh, my phone is oh, okay. my phone is my webcam. I can't use it. Oh, okay. Well, as I pull this one off, <laughs> uh, a quick shout out to um, whoever sent that video to you today. That was pretty funny. Yeah, you want to give it to them? No, let's do their review. But I think that one's well, describe shout out. that video that got sent. It was. Uh, I think you should leave that one. Remember? Yeah. You sent it to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know who made that? Who? I did. I tricked you. <laughs> you little fucker. I was fucker, hoping eh? that you. I, I was he gave it to that. himself again. <laughs> Fucking sigh out, Braden. I was hoping that he would pitch that that person who made it should get it. And then I'd be like, joke's on me. How many I times has Braden won Theory of the Week yeah. by <laughs> posing as other people and submitting stuff to the show? Um, all of our followers on Instagram are just Braden. Yeah, Braden bots. No one's actually ever. The whole it. internet is Braden. Is <laughs> this whole podcast is supported by Braden's bot farm. Yeah. An entire short? social media presence is Braden. He doesn't have, oh, that's his, oh, that is his job. He just has a thousand just, accounts. Yeah. He just makes a bunch of accounts every day. Um, yeah. If only I would listen to the podcast with all those accounts. We <laughs> <laughs> Um, and before I do the theory of the week, quick shout out to, uh, Jose, uh, and his, he lost his, uh, dog Dino. Dino. All right, Pete Dino. Uh, good thing all dogs go to heaven and, you know, all good boys up there. So, uh, yeah, and then this theory of the week, this week is from blue 156. Uh, this is easiest way to get theory of the week. Go to Apple podcasts. Spotify, Facebook, leave us five star review. Amazing, informational, funny show. Just found the show and love every minute of it. I love the creature episodes. Thank you all for what you do. Oh, yeah. You could do one fifty six. And see how easy that was to get there out of the week. See how yeah. easy that was. That's super easy. There's really you can leave a review on Apple and on Facebook. That will uh, get you theory of the week. Leave a five star on Spotify, but you cannot leave written reviews. But you can drop your boys a five star if you, or or give us a five star on Spotify and and leave a written review on Apple. You can do both. There's not create different accounts. You can do both. Create a thousand thousand bot accounts each. Do that too. Stream the show nonstop. (laughs) We support it. You got somebody who owns a bot farm? Do it. (laughs) And if you're not supporting the show already, you want early access, ad free, all the bonus shit. You know where to go by now. AlienTheorist.com. Hit that support tab. Support your boys. Support your favorite podcast. We'd appreciate it. This week's new supporters, we got Carlos Flores. Mm -hmm. Where is the real Habib? Where is he? Good question. Where is he? Tell us. And Orlando Robinson the third. Anytime you got Yar, a, that seems yeah, to be that's a, a pirate light. name if we've ever heard one. It seems to be a little light on new, new Patreon support. On the tier right see. be saying. Uh, and as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you next after hours.
Um, I forgot to tell you guys 